This week for EMN5, we're going to talk about priapism, and it's defined as a persistent, painful erection lasting more than four hours, and it's unrelated to sexual desire. And the idea is that it's this persistent engorgement of the corpora cavernosa. So in a normal erection, the cavernosal artery, seen there in the middle, has a relaxation of the smooth muscle in the wall of the artery, which allows for increased arterial blood flow to the penis, and therefore there's engorgement of the corpora cavernosa and where the blood collects. This closes off the veins around it that would normally drain, and until the corpora cavernosa reaches the mean arterial blood pressure, this continues. Once the parasympathetic stimulation decreases, this process reverses and returns the penis to the normal flaccid state. In priapism, despite lack of sexual arousal, the cavernosum remains tumescent. This tends to have a bimodal distribution around 5 to 10 year olds and in 20 to 50 year olds, and that's mainly because of the etiology changes a little bit depending on age. In pediatric patients, so less than 18 years old, sickle cell is the predominant reason that these patients get priapism. You can see that it accounts for 67% in less than 18 years old. Adults, you can have a result from sickle cell, but the majority is more idiopathic and also from um, various drugs. And here's a list of some of the different ones. Um, it can be kind of atrogenic from an intracaval injection or some of these other drugs, antihypertensive, antidepressants, alpha blockers, PD inhibitors, and also cocaine can result or is, are associated with priapism. So there's two types we have to be concerned about. One is the ischemic or low flow state, and the other is the non-ischemic or high flow state. Let's talk about the non-ischemic first. So this is the high flow, and this is the not emergency. So this is a little bit more rare. Um, it's not painful, so that's a big thing to ask your patients about. And it has oxygenated blood that's going through the corpus cavernosum, which is why it's not emergent. It's oxygenated, there's no ischemia, and it's the result of a fistula. So it's a different mechanism than what we just talked about. The fistula is between the cavernosal artery and the corpus cavernosum um, that continuously leaks and causes this, and that's why it's not painful. It can be from blunt trauma or possibly a needle injury to the cavernosal artery or even congenital. Again, this is not an emergency. It resolves on its own, and there's no ischemia to the tissue. Ischemic or low flow priapism is our emergency, and that's what we talked about before. The mechanism is the impaired relaxation. It's very painful, and the reason it's a problem is because this blood is stagnant and becomes hypoxic, which leads to tissue ischemia and even compartment syndrome. After around six hours, you can start seeing damage and um, ischemia to the tissue, and around 24 to 48 hours, there can be irreversible damage to the tissues. So how do we tell the difference between these two? They're quite different. The idea is we need to get a blood gas, and we're going to do that by aspiration, and I'll talk about that in a second. But once we get a sampling of that blood in the corpus cavernosum, we can tell that the ischemic state, what we're looking for is a low pH, a low oxygen, PO2, so less than 40, and a high CO2. And if you see any of those things, we need to be concerned that this is ischemic low flow state, especially if they're having pain. So like I talked about, we need to do an aspiration to actually get a sampling of this blood. And this is actually both the diagnostic and the treatment. Two things we want to avoid. On the top side, we're avoiding the dorsal vein and artery. And on the bottom side, we're avoiding the spongiosum and the urethra. So we're going to be going at either the 9 o'clock or the 3 o'clock position. We're going to use a 19-gauge butterfly needle. After inserting this needle, you might get spontaneous drainage. Or if the blood is pretty stagnant and has been there for a while, you might need to actively aspirate. So here's our diagram of what we're going to be doing for our treatment. First off, we're going to get that blood gas and decide if we think it's an ischemic or a non-ischemic state. If it's the non-ischemic, high-flow, oxygenated blood in our blood gas sample that we send, we can observe this patient with the help of urology and we're done. If it's ischemic priapism, we're going to try to aspirate that blood out. If the does not resolve from that, we need to continue on to the next step, which is an injection of phenylephrine. We're going to leave that needle in place that we had already, and in there we're going to inject a solution of phenylephrine that you need to mix up. It's going to be a 100 microgram per milliliter solution. You're going to inject 1 to 2 mils, just leave that needle in place, inject 1 to 2 milliliters every 3 to 5 minutes until it resolves. And you can do this up to an hour or up to a dose of 1 milligram or 1,000 micrograms of the phenylephrine. Now if this still does not resolve the priapism, we need to involve urology to discuss some shunting or some irrigation. And that might mean that we need to add additional needles and actually irrigate out that stagnant ischemic blood or possibly even make some shunts. Again, this is all in consult with urology. So three to remember for priapism. 
The definition is a persistent, painful erection that lasts greater than four hours. You have the two types, the ischemic and the non-ischemic. Remember, the ischemic is the emergent because you have that stagnant, hypoxic blood, and you need to get a blood gas to differentiate those two. Your diagnosis and treatment is going to involve inserting a 19-gauge butterfly into the cavernosa at either the 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock position, drain off as much blood as you can, or inject phenylephrine solution until it resolves. Either way, give urology a call so they can help you manage this patient. Here are the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.